Hey folks, my name is Tom Vassell and welcome to our top 10 tens, our top 10 tens. There's no question that I think, and I've said this many times, that the best kind of box for a board game is, well, a box, not a tin. And this seems to be happening more and more because there's fewer games that come in tins these days. But as some people like tins, they do look sharp, but they don't stack well, they dent easily, the lids pop off and everything falls off, and I just don't see any benefits to them. But that doesn't mean there's not some good games in tins. So here are my top 10 games that come in a tin. Number 10 is Quarriers. Quarriers is a great game. Game. This is number 10, not because I don't like the game, but because only the very first edition came in a tin. It came in like a little tin square box because they wanted it to look like a cube. After that, it started coming in boxes. Why? Because tins aren't good. But that original one, it was kind of a cool thing. Like, hey, look, it's a die. How do I stack this on the shelf now? Oh, good, they made a second edition. I'm in. Number nine is Harry's Grand Slam Baseball. Now this game is an old game that was reprinted by Out of the Box Publishing. It's a very, very simple baseball game. Just play some cards, see what happens, score a baseball game, very quick. Um, it's a, there's a really great backstory behind how the game ever got designed and published. It's a fantastic little game, Harry's Grand Slam Baseball. Number eight is Brave Rats. Everyone always talks about Love Letter uh, as the ultimate little mini game. Brave Rats is right up there, really. It's a great little two-player game in which you're going back and forth. It was an originally uh, Japanese game, and now they remade it um, into Brave Rats. I like the theming of it. A nice little small game. Number seven, Mint Works. Now, this one actually don't mind the tin because the tin makes sense here. It looks like a little mint tin. And you open it up, it's a worker placement game. You're gonna place different things around on the board um, with the little workers and build these buildings. There's all actually quite a bit in this tiny little box or tiny little tin, I should say. Number six is Timeline. Most of the Timeline and or Cardline games come in tins, although I don't actually prefer the tins. I have the big Timeline Challenge box and store everything in that. And even before I got that box, I was taking these cards and putting them in a baseball card box because, again, tins are annoying. But Timeline, a great game about guessing dates and trying to figure out where a card fits somewhere in that line. It's a fantastic game. I highly recommend it. Number five, Sushi Go. Now, they did come out with a bigger Sushi Go party, but the original Sushi Go came in a tin. Sushi Go, very simple drafting game, fun and easy to play. Another one I highly recommend. I like it a lot, Sushi Go. Number four, Get Bit. Now, Get Bit comes in a box these days, but again, the original version of Get Bit came in a tin, or maybe it wasn't the original, but one of the versions of Get Bit. Get Bit, there's a shark swimming after all you swimmers, and you play cards, trying not to be the last person because they'll lose a limb, literally. They look like little Lego robot type things, but you actually pull limbs off, and you want to be the last one swimming away from the shark. Number three is Forbidden Island. When I ask people about tin games, the Forbidden Island and Forbidden Desert are the first ones that pop into people's heads. Forbidden Island, a cooperative game for anybody, but kind of geared towards kids as you're trying to work and you know save your island before the island sinks under the sea you say, or get some artifacts off an island. Beautiful components, really, Forbidden Island. Number two is Dragon's Gold. Dragon's Gold also came in a box in later editions, but one of the editions had, came in a tin in Dragon's Gold. You have a bunch of adventurers. You're going out slaying dragons. That's the easy part, splitting the loot between you all. You have one minute to split the loot. You have to split it, all the loot. Everyone has to agree or no one gets anything. Really kind of a mean game, but I like it a lot. And number one, I already mentioned, Forbidden Desert. Forbidden Desert was the sequel to Forbidden Island. It is a really cool cooperative game in which you're trying to find parts of an airplane and get out of the desert as sand is moving around and before you die of you know, dehydration. Great game. I will say, though, that the newest one, Forbidden Skies, came in a box, so maybe they decided tins weren't worth it after all. Anyhow, those are my top 10 tin games. What is your favorite tin game? Um, let me know in the comments. Where did I get it right? Where did I get it wrong? Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching a top 10 list on the Dice Tower.